climate change is expected to increase displacement of population in the future. Uh, today, uh, people are already displaced by climate change. One person is being displaced every second by a uh, disaster. Uh, and uh, we also see that uh, climate change and conflicts are interrelated. Um, droughts, for example, in Syria has played a ma major role in uh, as a trigger of the current crisis. And um, when you ask people where, why they move, it's usually a combination of environmental factors and conflict factors. Uh, so it's all interlinked. So UNHCR has a role to play because we have a major experience in um, displacement uh, management, but also we have, uh, I mean, in the case of climate change, you can really prevent and reduce this displacement, and that's why we're here. We're here to help states, to support technically states, uh, to help them prevent um, and reduce future displacement. It's amazing to see how human mobility issue has been in the draft text in all the versions so far. So we are very pleased with that. However, uh, it has always been endangered because it either under brackets or as an option. Um, so far, it's addressed under the loss and damage article. Um, and this article is, um, is endangered because it's a very political uh, sensitive issue. So, uh, so far, both the agreement and the COP decision include human mobility and as well as the preamble, uh, which has a reference to migrants. Um, so we will be supportive of having option two of uh, the article on loss and damage uh, preserved, because this is where the mention of uh, displacement migration plus relocation is. And uh, in the draft uh, COP decision, um, there is uh, language on human mobility under brackets, and we hope these brackets can be removed. From the very beginning, we were clear that climate change, human mobility should be under both adaptation and loss and damage, because there are so much you can do to prevent displacement. You can uh, increase the resilience of people so that they remain where they live. You can uh, encourage migration and dignity if people have to move and you can plan for relocation in dignity uh, with participatory measures, including communities, uh, in order that people are moved out of harm way, but that their human rights are preserved. Uh, so far, there is no mention of this issue under adaptation. I think it's really a pity, but in the loss and damage language, there is this plan relocation migration uh, mention. So, you, you can bring back these adaptation um, issues in the loss and damage itself. So, and the, the frontier between loss and damage and adaptation has always been very obscure. So it's not like there is, everything is being separated forever. So, yeah. So in the past, we only had a reference in the COP16 in Cancun and then in Doha uh, on, on this issue of human mobility. And that's why it was, it's vital that it is addressed now in the COP in Paris uh, for setting up the next years of climate change regime in a way. Uh, it's amazing how the work of inter-agencies through the advisory group, uh, working all together, bringing common messages to delegates has been powerful because now in the text, the way it's framed it's usually using our language that we've been recommending. So it's good because we are not like uh, um, lobbying, but we are more advisors of, of states. And I think it's, it's well perceived. Uh, it has built uh, trust. Uh, also, we can see how the media are interested in the issue and how, uh, how many side events happened and how good the speakers are. And they are all saying more or less the same things. So it's, uh, I think the issue now has gained a lot of uh, visibility and credibility and it's unavoidable that it needs to be part of future climate change regime. Okay, I can speak clearly about the cooperation between IOM and UNHCR. ILO so far has not been so much involved with 
the advisory group and the UNHR IOM collaboration, maybe more with IOM, but not so much with UNHR. Um, so it's amazing if there is one issue UNHR and IOM are very well working on, it's the climate change human mobility issue. Uh, I think we have realized we are really complementary. Uh, IOM is really dealing with uh, migration and dignity. Uh, UNHR is uh, very, has developed guidance and plan relocation and is more on the protection aspects when displacement occurs. So we are very complementary and I think in this field of human mobility and climate change, you can see it's cross-sectorial. So that's why you need um, all the agencies that has uh, work on one of the sectors to be involved in the policy. And so uh, this is what the advisory group is trying to do. And I think it could also involve more actors in the future, such, such as ILO, uh, OCHA and other actors that has not been so much involved so far, but could be more involved in the future. So it's really important that on this issue, we all work together because we all bring it a part of uh, expertise uh, and a part of the solution that needs to be uh, coordinated in a, in a way to identify what are the gaps, but also to avoid that there is duplication that is not helpful.